There is only one thing you should work on a guitar. Anything else is either going to waste your time or bring you to the conclusion that I just need to work on that one thing. I thought long and hard on this video because it's such an important one. What is the best way for me to present the message? What kind of story can I use to captivate you? And I decided none of that today because the message is so important that I'm gonna keep things straight to the essential. Let's get started. Now, in order for you to understand, let me take you back to the year 1497. That's the year where everything changed for me. Back then, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna grab your instrument and then you're just gonna play a chord. This chord could be anything. The name of the chord is irrelevant. You don't even need to know the name of the chord. As long as it's a series of notes together that sound good to you, that's what we're gonna use. Once you have that, you're gonna start singing a few notes. It has to be very simple. It's gotta be something you can remember, something that sounds good to you over the chord. You might give it a few tries, that's okay. And once you have that very simple theme, we're gonna start visualizing it. Now this could mean different things, but you're gonna start by visualizing the melodic line. If it's a series of ascending notes, the line is gonna go up. Descending, the line's gonna go down. So for me, what I just sang is gonna look like this. Now we're gonna translate that mental picture on the instrument, but you're still doing that mentally and visually. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to picture the chord shape you just played. And I want you to try to fit mentally, by looking at your fretboard, where that theme would be played somewhere within the same zone of the fretboard you played the chord on. Once you think you have the answer, check it on the fretboard and adjust if you need to. Now, the reason we're doing this mentally before trying to figure out the notes on the fretboard is for your benefit. I see, because we're doing this exercise each time we're picking up the guitar, remember, anything else is a waste of time, you're gonna see progress. So there's a lot of stuff that is happening in your subconscious as you're doing this exercise that is really gonna speed up the process of translating what you're hearing and playing. All right, so at this point, we have a very simple theme that started by singing over a chord. Now, both of these elements match together. They're coherent, and we know how to play that theme. Now, we're gonna go back to the very first step. We're gonna sing that theme over the chord, and as we're singing the theme, now I want you to visualize what it would look like on the instrument. Now, at this point, you know that what you're visualizing is one of the possible ways to playing that. Now that means that you're associating frets and strings to a musical line. This is where it gets interesting. We're not gonna change chords. Now try to play a chord that is within the same area of the fretboard. Now this chord could be something that you know will work or something kind of random. That's completely okay. Just play that new chord and sing the same exact theme that you figured out. Now some notes, might be good, some might not. If they're not, I want you to go back to the first few steps we took. But this time, we're not starting from scratch. We're starting from the theme we sang. We're singing the theme, thinking of each note of the theme, and asking ourselves, should I modify that note, or should I leave it intact? And I want you to keep as many notes in common as possible. There's two reasons for that. The first reason is for the listener. When the listener can relate to something that he's heard before, it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable. And the second reason is for you, the player, you already know where these notes are being played on the fretboard. If you only have to change one of these notes, that's easier. And 99.9% .9 of the time, when you alter a note in music, it's either gonna be a half step above or a half step below. And that's just one fret. And since you already know which frets and strings correspond to the original theme, it's gonna be very easy to modify that theme to fit that new chord. Now that the original theme fits on that second chord, that's great, just keep going. Eventually, you're gonna play a chord where you're gonna to have to change that theme. I want you to get to that point because that will really help you develop your ear and your reaction to what you're hearing. At first, it might seem like a lot of work, and that's okay. If it takes you a full 30 minutes on just two chords, 
that's great. It means that you need it. You have to keep at this. See, this kind of exercise is one of these exercises that encompasses so many different disciplines found on guitar, technique, theory, ear training, everything is encompassed in this exercise. And a lot of the work is actually done in the background. Your subconscious is doing tons of work in the background and it's fun too. And eventually this whole process is gonna become second nature. You'll find that you start thinking less and less about scales, techniques, theory, and all those things are gonna be created for a different kind of playing, a responsive type of playing, a reactive type of playing, kind of like a primal way of playing. Unfortunately, I haven't seen many guitar players take that route, but the few who do, oh my gosh, like such a big difference. And one of the best known players who does it is this guy right here, Brian May. Watch this, you're not gonna be disappointed. I'll show you how he does it. Check it out.